so I was laughing in the bathroom because I peed and it felt so good that I almost <laughs> fainted. <laughs> what the fuck? James? Hey guys, my name's James. I'm Jose. And this is Death to Squids. Wow, wow, I feel so good. I'm gonna close the door now because uh, I hope Nicole picked up in the mic. <laughs> All right, hold on, hold on. Hey, Jose, how you been? Oh, man, I've been good. I'm just working a lot lately and just kind of just tired all the time and waiting for the summer to hit because it's about to get busier. So once the summer's over, I can finally relax. But hell yeah, this movie, man. Hell yeah. We are discussing Cyborg Cubed, Cubed. The Recycler. And man, this this series wait, fucking rules. This Mine is, is that one thing. Uh, the one thing. Yeah. Rules. But it's three distinct, three totally beautiful movies. movies in like aesthetic. They all deliver. Like it feels. It, it feels like we uh, traveled along uh, like the uh, the apocalypse with them, where it's. It's this, like, it feels primitive after the apocalypse happens and, like, the world is changing because of it. But it feels primitive. It feels like we jumped back 50 years. But then you eventually, like, learn how to make things cool and then you make it all, like, flashy and neon light and then it becomes like mad max it just feels like the seasons of post apocalyptia are being presented in this yeah it was it like i will say three totally different movies uh -huh. man not just how they're written but how they're shot yeah and even though it is like you know almost a post apocalyptic cyberpunk ish mm -hmm. setting they all kind of seem like they all take place in a different subgenre yeah. almost and it's kind of it's refreshing every time uh-huh man it rules yeah, oh it sucks that there wasn't a like a fourth or a fifth. Uh, I think there's Cyborg Nemesis. Yeah, okay, that is one. So do we do that one? It's got Vincent Klein from the first movie. Who's Vincent Klein? Fedor. F the, the like big guy. The main bro main oh, antagonist. Okay, all right. Hell yeah. Yeah. When did that come out though? Ooh, I was just looking at this I, like, actually. If it's 2020, I'm gonna say I don't want to watch that. But if it's still like late nineties, early two thousands, I'm down. Give me one second. One thousand one. Oh, guys, uh, trying to edit last episode when I was very stoned was so. It this truly must be the easiest podcast for me to edit of any of the shows I do because I was able to do it while still like going just like zoning out and going like oh <laughs> so Nemesis is actually the same director from the first one uh huh 2014. Oh, because mm -hmm. there was a Nemesis series that he did that I was like, should we do these? Well, let's watch Cyborg Nemesis and see if we okay. like it. And From if 2014. Ugh. But I, I don't know if that should be the next one. I think, yeah, I think we should steer with like, Starship Troopers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think so. Uh-huh. And then we, we got to start doing Resident Evil, man. Dude, that's going to be sick. Uh-huh. Do we end on the show or... Do we what? Do we if we do Resident Evil? Do we end on the sh on the show? Like, do we end on the series or? Oh, I would say we uh, just the main the main uh, movies. Mila Jo is it Mila Jovovich? Yeah, yeah, the her movies and just those. All right, cool. Because those are true like sci-fi action movies, where the other ones were just like zombie action <laughs> movies. No, I know what you mean. I yeah. I'll watch them. I don't know about this one though, and it is. You know, cool that it's the same director from the first one, but let's what? get back. Oh, Nemesis. Nemesis yeah. yeah. Let's get back to three, though. Uh huh. It's Man. all like, Kadish, Kadish, we're getting real rowdy. 
Oh man, you got any uh, anything we should know before we get into our notes? Oh yeah, Daddy, the creation or no, the creator. I think it was the creator, the recycler, whatever. The oh no, it was the creation. Yeah, the recycler, whatever the name it goes by. It's a machine that never sleep because this week ah, I got I gotta <laughs> get a drink of water. Oh man! Hold you, on. You want me to read it? Yeah. All right, I'll try it. Oh, okay. Hold on. No, yeah, you read it. You read <laughs> it. But I'm gonna grab a water real quick. I'll start. I'm not a very good public reader, but no one's gonna be watching me. The creation, the recycler, whatever the name it goes by, it's a machine that never sleeps. Because this week we're discussing Cyborg Cubed, released straight to video on December 19, 1995. Too close to Christmas to get stuffed in those stockings, producers. But I did realize something. It was released before the American release date was nineteen uh, December 19th, 1995. But what kept messing me up was that IMDb's has the credit for the very first release for this was actually in Hungary in 1994 for some reason. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's real early. Yeah. Like, that's a full, that would minimum be a full year. Yeah, it was like June 1994. That's, that's a year and a half release difference. In Hungary? I don't know. IMDb, IMDb can be weird sometimes. I have one bit of trivia uh, for this movie and it's not even on IMDb. It's under glass. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's under glass shadows. Yeah, because the IMDb trivia for this movie has nothing, but for glass shadows, it has this, and it's weird that that's not on the third <laughs> one, because it's very focal to what the third one's about. Oh, man. Uh, Jolie agreed to do Cyborg 3. She met with Schroeder to discuss the script, but the producers decided to move away from Jolie for cash when Zach Galligan refused to work with an unknown. Hmm. Wow. Wow. I don't even know who Zach Galligan I no is. I, I don't know, but I, I know he's the he ends up playing Evans in this movie, the doctor. I don't know. That's uh, kind of funny. Uh, Schroeder tried to quit the picture, but when he lost Jolie, but was forced to, by contract to uh, direct the film. The pre-sales were contingent on the Cyborg Two director helming the sequel. It was a, it was the worst production experience ever for Schroeder. Uh, we have a review, a couple reviews. Yeah. Okay. Oh no, I want to read the reviews. You read yeah. the reviews? Hell yeah. How'd I do? Very good. Thank you. I'm not a very good reader, guys. So that took a lot for me. Also because there's probably <laughs> typos in there to make me purposefully mess up. Oh, maybe. I, I don't know. It looked fine to me. All right. This review is from IMDb. It's JV Mean Streak. They gave it a 10 out of a 10. Title of the review is... You're backstage at the edge of creation, ellipses. This is from January 28, 2003. Holy shit. Being an avid fan of sci-fi, I thought there was no way another film could compare to what is probably the utmost important sci-fi the Vindicator. This is a movie we got to do. The Vindicator? Yeah. Huh. I was wrong. Cyborg 3 is probably the greatest sequel of all time. There's Empire Strikes Back, guys. There's Godfather <laughs> Dude, there's 2. So, guys, so okay? There's Guardians of Galaxy Volume 2, you know? <laughs> Dude, what the fuck? There's Avengers 2, you know? Well, this There's Spider-Man 2! This this came out in 2003. Oh. <laughs> but still, the, I, I listed Empire Godfather 2, and I think, what was the most recent one I said? Avengers 2, Spider-Man 2. Oh, Spider-Man 2. Yeah, Spider-Man 2 would have been out in 2003. Would it have? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Or maybe not. Maybe it was like 2006. Maybe. Man, I I played the shit out of the Spider-Man 1 and 2 video games. I mean, I just, I have a warm coziness associated around those games. Those were fun games. I had it on, I had an I think two or three on the GameCube. I forget which one. It was. I had one of them on the GameCube because that was the system we had at the time. Uh -huh. 
It was hard. <laughs> it yeah. might have been one, actually, because it was pretty hard. You would die okay. if you hit the ground. Oh, no, yeah. Spider-Man 2, you could, do yeah. you get, the whole thing was you got to web swing everywhere. Yeah, I, def- I think it was one, because, like, the in one, if you touch the ground, you die. Yeah. <laughs> so. Okay. Oh, yeah, the sequels of all time. I would go as far to say that it betters the original Van Damme fest with the combination of ultra realistic makeup slash special effects, <laughs> gritty storyline, and Oscar worthy acting. Cyborg 3 is a real treat for the family and is in probably my personal top 10. No, wait, no, and is in my personal top 10. Overall, I'm looking forward to Cyborg 4. <laughs> Man, dude, this that review rules. Whoever you are out there, just I hope you still love Cyborg 3, dude. That's wild. I know. Hell yeah. <laughs> I hope if you have children or nieces and nephews, like you, sh- you're going to show them this movie as like, this meant something to me. Dude, I don't know, man. That's man. Like, this is like when my dad was like, hey, we got to watch Star Wars. Like, that could be their star. Like, they don't think Empire Strikes Back is the best sequel. And if they're sci fi oh fans, God. of course, no, they're <sighs> they have chosen. Cyborg is better than is better than Star Wars, the franchise, and Cyborg 3 is better than Cyborg. Some very strong opinions there. Uh, yeah, man. I'm Garovey, baby. Next review, these are now all from Letterbox. M Bienna, M underscore Bienna from 2024 says. Certainly the worst of the trilogy, a film that seems to actively thumb its nose at the notion of consistency, coherency, and competency. Uh, (laughs) That's so foul. Oh, oh man. Like, it's such a, like visceral burn on this movie. I didn't get that feeling from it, though. I, I Okay, I sometimes the cohere, or coherency or co- consistency, no, coherency. Yeah. I was like, yeah, what is going on? Yes. But the callback. But we are also very fucking high. True, yeah. I, I don't know. The, like, the remember- references, to, I don't think we're too on the nose. Like, we're too crazy. Because I had to ask you a couple times in the movie, like, what did they say? Or what does that mean? Yeah. So, I don't know. I didn't... That's funny, though. Yeah. Also, I was going to say, like, we... Uh, like, we might not remember because we're high. And, like, also <laughs> remember... I peed so good I almost fainted. <laughs> like that's the that's how my day's been going. Yeah, that is true. Uh, perception is is uh, a problem. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So f- two stars from V Conqueror from 2023 says actually really entertaining despite how ridiculous it was. Menu and credit sounds were bangers for real. <laughs> One star from stuntman Mike Flynn from 2023, it says, smells pro-life. Two stars from Steve Cuff from 2021 says, the only entry in the Cyborg series that is pro-life and anti-Malcolm McDowell. One stars by Mexican Cheese from 2015. The Cyborg series goes pro-life. And finally, Joe Smith from 2022. A pregnant cyborg? I never... (laughs) Oh, man, the internet fucking rules. And finally... And fi- oh, I should have just ended on that. But and finally, from Carlo V from 2020, they say, "Not even gonna pretend to be surprised. To was a fluke. Probably more okay if you have a soft spot for Mad Max movies. As for me, too, <laughs> too much." <laughs> Too much sand. <laughs> Many exclamation points. Too much sand. <laughs> it's fucking Anakin. It's such a funny review. I'm so 
glad I went back to it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> no. Okay. 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 <laughs> Focus, James. <laughs> Don't like the way it feels. <laughs> Do not like the way it <laughs> looks. And finally, <laughs> get it out of my movies. <laughs> Wow, we it's not even 20 minutes in. <laughs> I feel like we discussed the entire movie. We haven't even discussed any, uh, most of the movie. I'm I'm crying uh, so my glasses have reviews. started fogging up, I think. Oh, oh. my god. Oh. oh. That was a banger. <laughs> that was such a banger review. <laughs> <laughs> Don't like sand. <laughs> Get it out of my movies. <laughs> oh, Carlo V. Man, you're so fucking funny. Follow <laughs> Carlo V on Letterboxd. Oh, man. Oh my god. I ha I'm going <laughs> I need to remember to to comment that review and say, "Holy shit, I la we laughed. So this is so good." And I know they're serious too. No, they're not they serious. Be no. Serious. No, because they, they use so many exclamation points. People. Carlo V, please let me know. <laughs> did, did this is comedic intentionally, right? Dude, I don't think so. No, that's like how I would write a review. I would go like, I went to, I went to, uh, but this is, a, this would be like a real thing. I went to medieval times, love the show, but their dinner, don't like eating with hands. And then I like go into like this wild review just because I'm like, ew, this is gross. Finger foods, get them out of here. Give me a spoon, give me a fork, and that's a good day for me. That's why it's so funny, because there are actual people like that. No! <laughs> yes, they are. Carlo V, you, <laughs> he are, used so many are. exclamation points. Carlo V, just say, you are a... Are you Carlo V? <laughs> and when you take the M, you break it in half, to or... No, you take the V and turn it upside down, put two ones together. That's an M. Are you Carlos Mencia? Because that's how fucking funny you are, dude. Dude, I'm telling you. If this is somebody over the age of 45, they definitely type like that. No, okay. No, I think this was like a 17-year-old kid. Oh, man. man. I, I hope this is real, dude. If it's real, it's fucking hilarious. No. Even if it's fake, it's fucking hilarious. Yeah, I think it's fake. I don't think so. Uh, also, I saw that there was a cyborg comic, but I was like, oh, you dumbass. It's like the Justice League's a cyborg. <laughs> I was like pumped. Like, fuck yeah. Let's read it on the podcast. And then, nope. And there's this there's this comic book called Cybors. It was during the trend of like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, you know, like it's four radical dudes, but they were like a team of like cy like boars. Cybernetic boars. Yeah. It nice. was it was pretty gnarly. I'm gonna have to check that out. I guess is it got like three issues, maybe. Okay. We find out that the cyborgs used to be the humans' friends, chefs, warriors, and lusters. But now is it because I swear they said like it's been like 30 years since new uh, like androids were made and they've been like hunting them now. Yeah, I thought that's what they were saying yeah, too. Yeah, but then there's that we meet this doctor guy who looks our age. So yeah. like from like 26 to 32 like in that area, he looks he could pass for that. We could even say like 35. 
35 max. At, at the, at the, at the yeah. most. And he's supposed to have built code for all these cyborgs who haven't been built in 30 years? Yeah, I don't know. It, it, the continuity is a little... It's eh, weird. But I'm not... Or are we to believe he's so smart he doesn't age as fast? I don't... They, they should have put a gray streak in his hair. Yeah, because they, they made the other dude die. The cult at the end of second. Oh, one. yeah. He grew old and died. Yeah. So... And he had to at least be thirty, yeah. right? In the first one, in the second movie. So if he grew old and died, that's at least like what? Let's say forty years more. Yeah. So, so when did these? When did they stop making cyborgs? Yeah, I don't know. We should have rewatched it. No, nah, nah, we're I'm, good. I'm good. I want to just watch Troll Two with you. I'll watch Troll Two with we you. We have to. I'll do that for fun. Oh, like a summer movie night. <laughs> We could do that for fun, yeah. Okay. With their friends and such. They're driving around in this car that the center of gravity is minus because this future car is just made of light plastic <laughs> and like a chassis and that's it. It looks like it's it, uh, a slight breeze will blow it over. Yeah, just a big old... Whew. I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your car down. Not even a big one. Just yeah. a small one. It, well, if only it was built of brick. Take a fan. Just do that. Just fan it. Do you think cars made of bricks would be safe for pedestrians? <laughs> Fuck no. Uh-uh, guys. Yeah, it's healthy Stone Age family. Yeah, they got some blood on their hands when they started doing concrete cars. Yeah, con doing a full car out of bricks at like high speeds, uh -huh. I don't think is a. It's not very aerodynamic, but b. Like if you if you hit something, that car's exploding. Yeah, but no. what if it's another car made of bricks? That's an even bigger explosion. All right. It's just like one giant explosion. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. What was I going to say on top of that? I don't remember. Oh, and we do see an Al, Al Pacino lookalike get chased down by that truck too. Yeah. And he looked like he was doing the cinnamon challenge. Yeah. I remember that thing. Oh man. Did you ever do it? Yeah. Did you succeed? No. I don't, <gasps> don't think it's really a thing you can succeed. Uh, I think if you do just like, a, just a couple flex, you can do it. <laughs> I think, I think that's, you're good there. A couple flex, yeah. Yeah. Maybe just like a, a spot on your tongue. Maybe I just swallow the whole cinnamon stick. Yeah. I swallow them anally, babe. <laughs> so my farts smell like... So my farts smell like a honey bun. Cinnamon and cream, babe. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, babe. <laughs> That's a pretty good dentist guy. <laughs> so that guy, the Al Pacino lookalike, he said, I'm just a dirt farmer. And I'm like, all <laughs> farmers are, except for a hydroponics. I'm just a dirt farmer. I did not catch that. I'm going to yeah. be honest with you. I did not I'm catch it. I'm just a dirt farmer. I'm just a dirt farmer. I farm dirt. You ever farmed? No. My grandpa had a little farm. I, always, I, I would farm with him. I always wanted to. Like yeah. When I was younger, I wanted to do some farming. Did you ever watch Richard Scary? Did I ask you that? No. Oh, Did you watch Richard Busy Town, Busy Town Richard Scary? No, I didn't see that. Oh, one. dang. You got to get closer to that mic. I, I didn't see that one. I'm okay. sorry. I, I, no. I'm trying to think if I know about that, but no. It's got that cat, and then it's uh, there's a worm in a, flying around in an Apple ho helicopter. No, that Dude, sounds so sick. It's so, it, and it's so cozy. It like looks like it's painted with like water paints or like some. It's just very, it's so well done. It's on Tubi, I think. You should check it out. It's, oh, dang. I'm that's what I'm falling asleep to, guys. What's so it called? We gotta, we gotta dash through these. What's it called? Busy Town of Richard Scary. All but, right, all but right. But not Busy Town Mysteries. That that one's a newer one, so aesthetically busy town rules. You put too much yeast in the dough, Abel Baker Dave. <laughs> What? That's a quote that's been in my head since preschool. 
<laughs> of this this these two chefs. This guy put too much yeast in the dough, and it like expanded and started like exploding his bakery. And he's screaming, "You put too much yeast in the dough, Abel Baker Dave." I don't. That's hilarious. Yeah, it's really good. It's cozy. I gotta check this out. Sorry. And the books that it's based on the that artwork is a time capsule into like I think like sixties or seventies children book coziness. Hell yeah. I'll definitely check that. I'll definitely check that out. Yeah, it's good. I, I don't have a lot of notes from the beginning just because I was trying to figure out what was going on. Oh, so he gets his eye pulled out and he says, I can't take you to my friends without my eyes. Yeah, I remember that. Because he was trying to say I'm not a cyborg, but hey, bitch, if you if you bleed cold, you're a cyborg. If you bleed yellow, right? Or oh, was that green. green? Yeah. Green. Green makes corn, and corn makes green, and green makes my girl green. Do you know that green. song? Green. No, I've never heard oh, it. Oh, you've never heard um, uh, rain makes corn, and corn makes whiskey, and whiskey makes my girl a little frisky. No, I've never oh, heard dude, that. Oh, dude, it's so stupid. Or have you ever heard... She's a corn star. You've never I've heard never this? never heard that Man, one. that was like it's peak 2010s trash country. God damn it. I've never heard. Oh, damn. Pull it up, bitch. What? Uh, maybe after. after, after okay. All right. After okay. Hey, guys, remember this. Okay, future James. And then that guy, the recycler, goes to this plant to recycle things and some dude's like trying to he's like oh i'll take your stuff and he's like no get out of here and he shoves him out and the guy goes recycler lend me your ear <laughs> and he he asks for an ear he asks for an arm uh-huh says no he's like I i'll do i'll even do a finger please give me a finger uh-huh and <laughs> That's when the re recycler turns to Jocko, his uh, uh, cyborg companion, and tells him, "Ah, yes, uh, yes, give him the finger." And turn and Jocko ends up flipping him off, mm -hmm. which was I called it too. Yeah, you you were doing the, you were doing this flipping off like Eminem. Yeah, that's that's how he flips off. I'm gonna start flipping off like this. Oh yeah, that's the Australian way. No thumbs, just the finger. But make it real tight. <sighs> it hurts. It really does. Actually. Yeah. It, it, it hurt actually, me physically and it hurt me emotionally thinking I was flipping you off. <laughs> no. Oh, actually, I'm fine with you flipping me off. But I don't want to think you, I don't want you to think I'm flipping you off. Wait, do this again, James? No. Just not like this. Why are you flipping me off, James? I know. I pointed it to the wall. It's that still pointing caving. at me. Oh, no, it's not. It's caving in. Now that you like think of it, it looks like Star Wars, you know? Yeah, it, it looks does. Like, with, especially with the lights around it. Yeah. It, it kind of makes yeah. it pop out at you. Oh, damn. <laughs> uh, it's like it's. Oh. It's also kind of cool because it looks like it's devouring you, James. Like you're just like getting like swallowed by the wall. Whoa, dude, this is this is trippy. Oh damn, I'm like outside in space. <laughs> okay, pull yourself together, man. <laughs> Don't forget, there's too much sand. Oh, fuck you, man. <laughs> is 17 pounds of pressure enough to make you itch your testicles till they bleed? They would explode. Oh, they would? Yeah. Uh, no, I've seen, like, ladies step on, on dudes' balls and they don't explode. True. Oh, ow. True. I don't know. My friend Tyler and his spouse were like, hey, you gotta watch this ball-busting video. 
and where it le- where it does, I think, pop. And I'm like, why do you guys like this? No, I'm good. Why do you want to show me this? Hey, check out this guy lose a testicle. Ugh. Pain Olympic uh, style. Ugh. Oh, don't even remind me. Is it that wild that like don't even remind that was me. pop culture? Yeah. It wow, was America. Weird. Eat shit and live, unfortunately. That was like my high school. It yeah. was like all of the Pain Olympics and oh. and then 50-50 on uh on Reddit. Where do you know you know what 50-50? Uh-uh. So 50 uh, 50 was this, I guess, page back in the day on 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 Reddit and it it would be like a post. It would say a beautiful woman uh getting a kiss on the cheek or a beautiful woman getting impaled. And then you click the picture and it could be either her getting kissed on the cheek or somebody getting impaled. Oh. Yeah, it was stuff like that. Uh, Reddit was weird back in the day. Damn, yeah. I didn't get on to Reddit until like 2018 or 19. I really didn't get into Reddit until a couple years ago. But in my biology class, there was somebody in my in our group because we hated that class. That teacher didn't know how to teach us anything. So we just didn't pay attention. Shout him out by name. No. <laughs> uh, and this guy in our, in our group, he'd just be like, it would either be the pain Olympics that we'd watch or play 50, 50 on Reddit. Okay. And it was just weird. <laughs> cause it was yeah. cause it like, it really was like a, a, a shot in the dark. It'd be like a bunch of kittens or a bunch of kittens getting, uh, being flattened. Like the, the weird no. shit like that. Yeah. Yeah. See, th- even today, I'm not on Reddit. I just, I only follow a few subreddits and I only read that. I never go to like homepage or the explorer <laughs> or whatever. Yeah. I'm like, no, I, th- even the subreddits I do partake in th- are still too many posts. <laughs> I don't want it. Like, I'm trying to get to the end so I can get off there as quickly as possible. Man, Reddit's a wild place. Wow, wow, West. Wow, wow, Reddit. I'm going straight to the wow, wow. Reddit. Reddit, dirty bit. Uh, then we, I love me a neon light hazy future bar. Yeah. That the there were these neon poles that women were stripping on, like doing pole dancing with. It was wildly cool. Right before that scene, though, there was this weird scene where Jocko, the protection cyborg, is at a, another cyborg slot machine. Oh yeah, that was weird. That was so weird, right? It, like it was, it had like a bit of uncanny valley yes! to it. I'm I'm glad you caught on Cause to that because like uh, they also overdubbed that person and the they just it didn't line up at all but it makes it feel like it's broken yeah 100 percent man I hope that was an intentional unlike don't like sand Th- that was intentional no uh, all my sen- oh so then we meet with up with cash and she goes. All my sensors read hypo normal. And then she, they're like, oh, we got to check your gut works. And then we find out she's pregnant. But it's like, why do you have a uterus? And it's weird. Not just because of that. She's a cyborg. Her husband just died of old age. But then uh, we find out, is it here? Oh, man. Th- there's a direct quote that I had. I guess we'll we'll have to. Uh, uh, no, yeah, it was like. Oh, uh, yeah, it's a cyber. She has a uh, Cyber- this, cybernetic wound. Yeah, yeah. This guy's with, like uh, a cryogenic sperm, sperm bank. bank. Yes. Yeah, she, but the guy's just so cavalier about it. He points at him and says, "Like, yeah, so uh, right here, uh, clear as day, cybernetic wound and uh, a cryogenic sperm bank." Uh, that was it. Just such. He said it with such normality too that you're supposed to be like, oh yeah, of course that makes sense. Yeah, no. No. (laughs) Also, if she has a human like you, like if it works all the same, you should be able to uh, just do a norm core abortion. Yeah, I I think that they knew it wasn't going to be the same though. 
Cause I it, get. Oh yeah, I guess it wasn't. It's just like locked down. Pelvis. Yeah, it wasn't a real. It wasn't like a real birth either. We're gonna get to that part. Yeah. But it, it it's weird. And then we're back to the recycler, and he's with a sex robot, and she says that she's been with fifty two thousand three hundred and twenty two men, and I'm like, same. <laughs> That's crazy. You're only 32, James. That's a lot of work. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Took you a second to realize I was talking to you. Oh, yeah. I'm I'm zoning, baby. That, that lady's like, oh, I'm pregnant. And she says, I'm not programmed for this, which sounds like a lot of dads when they uh, <laughs> get, a, get a, you know. They get a daughter? Is that what you're saying? When they have a kid? Yeah, they're like, oh, hey, I'm not programmed for not this. I'm going to go watch football, it. you know? You can watch your kid and watch football. Just make your kid watch football with you. <laughs> yeah. And then the cyborg criminal comes in, and he launches that doctor. <laughs> Dude, she fucking flies. Yeah, have you ever have you ever wanted to just launch a doctor like that? Yeah, I mean, I also would like to get launched like that too. Like, I'm next, please throw me. Yeah, and then uh, <laughs> she, the doctor's like, "Oh, I've never heard of that. She came to the wrong place." And it's like, just lie about what she came there for. You're being suspicious. So then, when you change your story, you'll just be more suspicious. And then I was like, "You ever want?" Wanted to backstab a MD because then they're like, oh, you're you are useless to us now. And they just stab her in the back. She tries. Brutal. She does try to fight back, though, before getting stabbed in the back. She slices the cyborg forearm uh, and he gets mad. And that's when he stabs her through the back, mm -hmm. which is. Oh, yeah. If you're going to if you're going to try and get out of there, like stab him. Don't slice yeah, I found the thing that I was looking for earlier because she says I'm not programmed for that. Oh, sounds a lot like dads. And then she says, I don't want this, which sounds a lot like moms. <laughs> she does ask for an abortion real quick, though. Yeah, in a mat. So uh, we are, we're not to that part yet. We've skipped the past the abortion part. Oh, no, no, no. We haven't gotten to her, the abortion program yet. Oh, no, but she asked for the abortion from that doctor. Oh, yeah. Well, oh, that was the part where I was saying, like, oh, I don't know how to do this. Like, I, I'm not. <laughs> she asked for her to destroy it. Yeah. It's such a funny way. <laughs> Please remove it from me. You I, have to. I am a, just a robot, not a mommy. mommy. Then I'd have to change my programming from a lady to a MILF. God damn it, James. What if, but then like that, it's kind of hot now. Like she is like the only MILF of all the android cyborgs. That, that makes her so much hotter. No. Because she's like unique. Nah. And it's like, I, this, is, this is something. Would you like donate sperm to her? Like to repop to help repopulate the cyborg race. I especially if it's you know like I don't have to like oh, cryo cryo freeze. I'm, I'd be like I will gladly for the service of your race explode inside of you. If we're the last beings on Earth, then sure. But I don't. I don't know. Man, soon she's gonna be with fifty two thousand three hundred and twenty two <laughs> men. They're going to repopulate the earth and I will gladly join. <laughs> I think you'd take, you'd take up on that opportunity pretty fast, James. Yeah. So then she leaves and oh, uh, also around this time she's getting chased and uh, I just wrote down because of their cockpits. This sometimes looks a lot like Bible man, which is a full on compliment. Really? Yes. Oh, I love how Bible man looks. I would... If anyone from Bible Man is listening, please release 4K transfers of the early Bible Man stuff. That stuff needs to be preserved in its highest quality. I'll I'll, t I'll defer to you on this, yeah. Yeah, man, I love it. I don't think I've seen any of Bible Man. Wait, yet. you've never done Bible Man with us? No. Dude, I, I, hey, maybe next week uh, I'll come over to you and we'll watch a Bible Man because I... Wait, I, did I... 
Did I do a bite with I mean, You might not have. I know I did, what was that, uh, the Lucha one? L- Los Luchadores. Los Luchadores. Yeah. We, we did that. We I've done uh, Los MSS. Uh, you we did some Godzilla. did some Godzilla for... The G-Fest thing. Yeah. I don't think I've done Bible Man. Oh, damn. Have you done Spider-Man? No. Holy shit, Jose. I know. Oh, my God. You got to you gotta come over and do that. Yeah. We got to... I got to plan. We got to plan this. Out. Uh-huh. We got to plan That's this my shit. All the girls get yeah, down yeah. like spit. Oh. Like dick. I, I, didn't, I, I didn't know the lyrics. Sorry. So, uh, you know, they always say don't operate heavy machinery or ride roller coasters when you're pregnant. Well, she is heavy machinery, and that car she drives is more dangerous than any roller coaster. One, uh, I don't... Uh, that car looks so weird. I don't know how they made it and how it drives. I would love it if somebody just did a documentary on how they made that ve- the oh, video yeah. for this movie. I I hear on DVD the menu and credits are, are really fire. good. Oh man. Then we get that line when she meets the doctor. He says she asks, hey, where are we? And he says, you're backstage at the edge of creation. And that's a gnarly ass line. That was pretty wild. There was a pretty gnarly guitar solo going on. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Imagine, so like, imagine coding an abortion program, running it, and it works only to be stopped via a man with a hand saw. Bro, they said it at the. You said it when you read the reviews. This is a pro life movie. Are you pro life? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, we we liberal cucks, baby. <laughs> oh man, I fucking love those fucking. Those were have to be the. I, I'm sorry to get off topic here, but those have to be the best reviews we've gotten for any of these movies what the reviews for this movie have oh, to yeah, be yeah, yeah. hands down the best we've had for any of the movies we've watched also please give me credit because i formatted them to be like that to like build on like one pro life then it elevates then it elevates again dude that yeah. was awesome oh man Sober James got some good <laughs> sleeves up his tricks, baby, because I'm fisting him. <laughs> yeah, you thought I messed up in the idiom? No, uh-uh. I knew I was going to end it with, yeah, and I'm fisting him. God damn it. Uh, oh, uh. they The people start coming after her. Yes. And I wrote down, she truly is built to be a mom after seeing her shoot that turret because it looks like a like a kind of new agey like mom like a, a someone who was new agey in their twenties and now they're a mom so but they still like kind of look like witch esque it's like those kind of moms gotcha yeah. Uh, so like that's my that's I just described my mom. Your mom, yeah, like witch esque. So it just looked like a like a mother shooting a <laughs> turret, and it's like okay, yeah, you. This is why you have a uterus. You are literally built for this. Yeah. Hey, did you see my new Huckleberry Hound with Christmas hat? Oh shit! Yeah, it's a pop figure. I got it at the convention. Hell I yeah. saw it and I was like, okay, I, I'm getting a little money from doing this. So if I get enough, so every single day, bef- like when it started and near the end, I would check to see if it was still there. And I was like, if it's still there an hour before the convention ends, I'm going to get it. And it was, so I got that. And then in Etragon, the demon. Oh, shit. Figure. I love Etragon. Uh, yeah, he's, yes, dude. Yeah. I really want to read Demon Knight. Yeah, um, I, 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 honestly, the love, my love for Etrigan is like uh, from a lot of the animated series and stuff. Okay, but I really have wanted to go back and read what, like, what comics he's come from. Oh, so I have like from I think the second series of his, I have like a full like maybe uh, like four to six issues that yeah the art's really really good it's he's just really cool 
Yeah, I fucking love Jason Blood and Etrian. It's so they're so fun. Uh, his version, it, he shows up in Batman White Knight, he, he, Batman and the White Knight, or in one of the series of that, and how he plays a part in it. It's really cool too. Hell yeah! I, I have to go back and I've, I've been wanting to go back and read some more comics, and that's one that I've been wanting to go back to to, uh-huh. to, to just get some good stories. You know? Yeah. Okay. They, they're they leaving, and the guy says, oh, we got to go to Psytown. It's the best-kept secret. And then as they're going, the car explodes, and then it starts to turn into a rom-com for one scene because she goes on this rant of like, oh, well, what do we do now that the car blew up? Huh? Oh, I guess we're just going to have to book it on feet. I don't even want to be with you here. It really did. It, like, And I'll, you find out that it was like trial and error to find where the force field is because they, they had to get to the force field in order to protect themselves from the recycler. And uh, <laughs> Evans, the doctor that she goes to find, tells her, uh, I, I I knew where it was. Um, I just didn't know the extent of where. <laughs> uh-huh. I didn't know the radius that the force field had. Yeah. <laughs> and now we know. Now we know. It's okay. We're fine. We got as far as we literally could. Yeah, now we walk. Yeah. Ten hours later. <laughs> Ten hours later. So my next thing is the recycler recruited a bunch of people, and they're ready to, like, go take them out. And it's so weird because he's like, hey, leave the one lady and its package to me and you get to just have fun and take out as many of these fuckers as you want. Who? Yeah. And as a token of my appreciation, I would like to provide you with the finest dandy and fine dand or and fine dandy makes me band together to slaughter innocent cyborgs. <laughs> and meanwhile, while this is happening... Oh, wait, no, no, it's not yet. That's later. Sorry. Uh, the one guy says, because they're trying, the cyborgs are saying, we got to fight. Uh, one says, do, uh, do you want to know what suck? You want to know what sucks? Being programmed to be a hero but are unable to fight. And he looks at his hands and they're just like cut off and they're just like wires. And he's like, ah, oh. it's hard to hold a, oh, he's like, uh, it's hard being a warrior for a trigger finger that you don't have anymore. And you still get the sensation that it's there. Oh yeah. You have a good memory. Uh, then she, there's this hot, almost sex scene, like the closest we get to a <laughs> sex scene, but it's the labor scene, but it starts out hot and horny, guys. Yeah, it almost looks like the doc puts his hand down her pants. Yeah, I was waiting for him to whip out his penis and she turns his, turns her mouth and then he's just, they're going to town on each other. <laughs> That's not what the kind of movie this is, James. It wasn't? Oh, I think I watched the wrong one on my Google glasses. Because <laughs> now there's hardcore penetration going on. Whoa, that was... Whoa, wrong video, James. Hey, if that's wrong, I don't want to be right. Who? <laughs> All right. Uh, so then she, like, they pull out, like, it's because it's a labor. And when she shows it off, it's, like, in a, like, baby shawl. And she's like, folds it over and she's like... Oh, yeah, he's not out yet, but will be in a couple months. It's like a small little incubator the size of a house phone. Yeah, (laughs) like that's so do uh, our cyborg babies really tiny and then grow super big comparatively. She's got to be pregnant for like at least a couple of days. Yeah, there's no way. I don't know. Yeah, she should have kept that. Maybe they do keep it. But like, how does it? I guess it's in a, a cybernetic womb, so it looks like it doesn't be able to grow, but maybe it can grow. Maybe. maybe. Yeah. Well, let's say hey, it's cybernetic womb. <laughs> you can't doubt that technology. Yeah. Sorry. You know, you're right. Yeah. God would be lucky to have had a cybernetic wound with Mary. Yeah. It's, it's a womb with a view. Yeah. Like he can, he doesn't need to, a virgin birth. You want to know it's a virgin birth? When it's, um, what were we talking about? (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> We're talking about the dev incubator. From- oh, a cybernetic womb. Fuck, man. I don't even know what I was saying <laughs> to get to that punchline. I'm such a dumbass. Chill, James. You're it looks good. like there's a cardboard cutout over there. Damn. It is. What? It is. That's not a cardboard cutout. This is. Shut up, man. <laughs> I know it's not. I know it's a collection of blankets. This is also your house. I'm yeah, gonna... I know. But maybe you brought a cardboard cutout and you like because you oh, I just came from work. I have this cardboard cutout. Hey, I just gotta set it somewhere. Yeah, just I this is the first room I hit when we came in here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, maybe it was. <laughs> or maybe you had it in your bag, but you know butter loves to eat cardboard, so you have to keep it close to you. It's cardboard and burgers. Yeah. I got to keep away from butter. There actually is a cardboard cutout of Home Alone 2 over here. Like, there really is a card. That's <laughs> what I think that is. I think it's the it, like his hair looks like that. My hair? No, no, the hair <laughs> on the cardboard cutout by you. The doink. It's it looks like a kid wrapped up in a blanket, but all it like his hair's poofed out, and that's all you can see from him. <laughs> and he's like watching outside the window, saying, "Oh, I hope she shows her titties tonight." <laughs> Gee willikers. God damn. Oh, I love peeping so much. Fuck. Is that you in no. middle school? Uh uh-uh. uh. God, if only, <laughs> if only, oh, you know? I, no, I don't. You take out a telescope, you know, a kaleidoscope. kaleidoscope. What if I'm peeping with a kaleidoscope? I think that's fine. I don't think you're really peeping at the point. Yeah, I think you're just you're just <laughs> endangering yourself and others walking blindly in the dark with like <laughs> tubes attached to your eyes. That's the only way you peep, guys. You it will excuse you for having a boner out and you're just like uh, assuming what's happening in reality. That's your kink. That's fine. No other peeping. Unless you're like, you know, a 13-year-old boy and you're like, "Gee, Willicker, sir." No. Cuz he's peeping on daddy. Does that change the anything? Peeping is bad. Peeping on daddy, though. Gotta see that hog dick. <laughs> <laughs> yes! Uh, during this, everybody decides to, you know, wind down for the night, and Jocko somehow infiltrates the compound on... Uh, si- on because he's a cyborg. Because he's a cyborg. Yeah. And then he goes to destroy the, the force field, <laughs> and in, do- in doing so... He steals the wo- steals the incubator. Yeah, the cybernetic womb. The cybernetic womb, and they try to. She tries to fight him, and he pushes her. Or what? What does he do? He just pulls it away from her and walks away. But she goes off on her own to go find them. Yeah. Rather than being like, "Hey, can I get some help from you, other cyborgs?" Oh yeah, I guess she should get came out gun strapped saying, "Give me back my kid." She tried. We're in the U.S. of A. in 2438. And you better believe we still love four things. Fuck, I'm fucking myself by saying four. We love... (laughs) We love beer. We love babes. We love bodacious women and we love our bullets and god bless america uh-huh yeah 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 so oh also when we're when showing her baby off someone says oh how does it feel and then she responds there's no program to describe it <laughs> Or there's no program for it. Oh, man. There were some cheesy lines in this, not going to lie. Yeah, what, like when that guy says, Lu- Llewellyn, Llewellyn owns me now. That part was wild. That, yeah, where she finds out that he used to be a pararescue droid. Yeah, because she says, search deep with inside your, se- deep within your software. <laughs> Not his hardware, but his and, software. And I want you to look deep and search deep inside your software, Jose, for the best burger you've ever eaten. 
best burger I've ever eaten. I know mine. What's yours? There was this place in Ann Arbor, Michigan called the Blue Tractor. And we just stumbled upon it after like an MC Chris show and or before, I don't know. And I got this thing called the Carnivore Burger. And it was a, like a, th- a thick patty and then thick cut bacon, Ooh. fried jalapenos, and then uh, pulled pork. And they had this array of house barbecue sauces that it's like, oh, one's like ketchup based, one's mustard based, one's mayo based, what, like whatever the bases are for barbecue sauce. They had all of them. And you could just like drench your like fries in it. It was so fucking good. Hell yeah. That sounds amazing. Yeah, the carnivore burger. I'm probably even leaving out some other stuff. Man, book. Best burger. I, uh, I, I had uh, one burger here in Chicago from O Chevelle. I really liked it because the how thick the bacon was and oh hell yeah, it was almost like a maple bacon, kind of like a candy bacon. Mm-hmm. But my dad used to make these like just like homemade patties, like by hand at home, like with. 80 20 you know lean fat and he would just throw like salt and pepper and that on some white bread was probably the best burgers i've oh, ever had hell yeah dude sometimes with some american cheese if you're if you're fancy but man i want to eat that now I'll, I'll make it one of these days all right because it's just it's just ground beef some seasoning white bread and if you like ketchup or mayo or barbecue or some, sauce or barbecue and sauce. hot ones hot sauce oh yeah i put that on everything that's crazy yeah oh it's so good <laughs> it's so delicious I gotta buy myself one of those. Uh, and the thing is, like, I put it in, like, I put a couple drops in, like, a chili. Okay. Uh, so then it's just, like, it's a nice heat, and it's, oh, it's so good. Fuck. No, we gotta stop talking about okay, food. Okay, yeah, We yeah. gotta stop talking about food. All right, I just have a few more notes. The guy starts fixing, the doctor starts fixing the androids, <laughs> and this one guy says, don't give me hands. Please retrofit these into my wrist. And then he just becomes gun hands. And he just starts like shooting <laughs> inside this like set. There I know they're blanks, but there's they're going off, guys. Yeah. And it's a pretty pretty low ceiling, too. Mm-hmm. They're in like a pretty cramped space. And he's just shooting. Yeah. And then the next scene we see of him with those guns, they're preparing the perimeter of the town for when the other recyclers get there. And he said, do you remember this line? Uh Uh-uh. He says, come and get it, you pussies. Ah, Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But doesn't shoot any bullets in this one. Yeah, and then, like, that guy is, no, it's not that guy. It's some other guy. Uh, Oh, I think the main, I don't know what, oh, it was the buff guy, the buff guy. He has a sword, and he, like, tosses it just before even fighting. He tosses <laughs> it up into the the ceiling, and then he punches people out. And I'm like, well, this is going to suck if he does. Like, it's going to be, like, comically funny if he doesn't, unintentionally funny, if he doesn't use the sword at all. He just pulls it down and leaves. But as I was saying that, he takes it and he just starts swiping into dudes that are bleeding. And then we get a Leo decapitated. Dude, that was a good like, uh-huh. good decapitation scene. I was angry. I thought he wasn't going to use that sword at all. And I was about to be like, that was a waste. And uh, they rewarded us, which I'm happy about. Yeah, and then they win is pretty much what... Yeah, I... I but oh, she though, explodes. Remember, yeah. Do you remember the weird uh, Jocko? <laughs> uh, the sword guy it goes to attack Llewellyn and Jocko, and Jocko shoots, guns him down. Oh, yeah. And, and he goes, he goes, not again. And then has a change of heart and steps over to the other, to the cyborg yeah. side. Which was so fucking weird. Yeah, and he should have just shot the 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 recycler. Yes, like just shoot him as soon. You don't need like he's irredeemable, guys. And then he like gets shocked, and the the guy's like, "Oh, you'll you'll if you kill me, you'll kill the baby." And then she's like, "I don't. If this is the world I'm bringing my kid into, I'm not." Actually, this doesn't. This isn't pro life. 
Yeah. Well, unless we find she, out. Unless we, she, like, it was that a decoy? Yeah. Oh, it was a decoy. It was All a right. decoy. Okay. Because yeah. she said, she says it. So she tossed, you know, she gets away from Llewellyn, but Llewellyn still has the bait, has the incubator. Uh huh. And she goes, to, she's like, you know, I don't want to bring a kid into this world if they're only going to be alive so people can harvest them for parts. Mm -hmm. So what's the point? And she unloads on Llewellyn go, go, and go, 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 go. the incubator and she goes, hurry, we have to, we don't have much time. She goes to another version of herself, uh -huh. like a, another, uh, the bottom half. No, uh, another <laughs> uterus, another another version of of her type of cyborgs, and she pull she grabs her uh, incubator okay, from in okay. there. She did a, a the classic switcheroo, you know. So we know it's it's still technically pro life. It was just yeah a good switcheroo. Okay, what do you rank? What do you what do you rate this? Man, I I loved it wholeheartedly. I think that's my last note. I love this movie. Uh. I like saying 4.5 just feels like I'm just I I'm trying to be cool and I don't want to give it a 5. So I think I got to give it a 5 star. I love this movie and I think it was a 3.5. Whoa, just a 3.5, not a 4, not yeah. a 4 and a half, not a 5. No, not but the I, illustrious. I six. love this movie f because of how bad certain things are. Yeah, and I, I just you just I love think that's this good. movie. Yeah. <laughs> no, I I love this movie because I had fun watching it because it was so fucking bonkers. Uh -huh. And then you read some of these reviews and you're yeah. like, God damn it. This, yeah. yeah, I guess everybody has the same experience. Yeah, and yeah, dude, this movie rules and. Next, next goddamn, next movie series is Starship Troopers. Hell yeah. I'm pumped for that, baby. I've seen the first and the last one. I've seen the first and maybe the second and third ones. I don't know. <laughs> May, I, maybe I have seen the second one, but it was, you know, a very late night movie rental. Yeah. So, you know, you're kind of falling in and out and it might have been on my brother's like tiny television set going to sleep, man. Yeah. So the, I probably only watched bits and pieces feigning from slumber. I might've been like seventh grade when I watched Starship Troopers and Damn. the last one. Cause I like it came, I saw the ending of the first one. I was like, Oh, I want to watch this. And I found it on YouTube and watched the first and only found the, the fourth one or whatever the last one is. I don't know what it was the first and the last one. And I was like, yeah, the first one was good. I don't know about this last one. All right. I'm pumped. But it's been a long time. So I want to, I can't wait to see it. Yeah. And we can't wait to plug stuff. Uh, but I got to get the thing that I read from. Boo boo. Man, this was a wild movie, I have to say. I, it just so much. Such a wild roller coaster of a ride. Yeah. Hey, guys, listen to my new album with Dragon Boy Suede, The Dragon and the Monster, wherever music is found. Or head over to marshlandmonster.bandcamp.com and it's buy it on Friday. This Friday is Bandcamp Friday, so we get all the proceeds. Bandcamp doesn't take any from the sale. So, yeah, guys, do that. Hell, yeah, you can get my entire discography for, like, $21. And that's that That all go, would go to me on this Friday. Hell, yeah. And listen to my other podcast, but head over to patreon.com forward slash MLMpod, where for $5 a month you get exclusive content every single Friday. This Friday is The Citizens of Townsville Z, with my very best friend, MC Deep, a.k.a. Tyler Bergquist, and his spouse, Kaya. It's the first time I ever met her, and then I'm just, like, going into, like, my wildness of, uh, of a podcast, but she was loving it. <laughs> we we were just razzing Burger nonstop. Hell yeah! Oh my god, my fr my friend's name is Burger, and you, you like you're obsessed with burgers. I might be obsessed with your friend Burger. Oh hell yeah, dude! Check him out on the Modern Myth wherever music is found. And if you're a ten dollar patron, you'll get bonus content like uh, straight to Patreon. Oh wait, wait, no, first. 
five to oh no and i said yeah ten dollar patrons get bonus content like straight to patreon where uh, joe's on a streak now because he uh, a month ago was on for beaster day with you yeah, hell yeah and then now he's on watching ghost shark with nicole and i you guys have opened up your home and it's it's so warm and cozy to go podcast over there. Anytime, man. Hell yeah. Dude, it's it's fun. Glad you enjoy it. And ten dollar patrons get shout outs on every single free free podcast. So let's begin with those starting with Steve F, Eric Barry of Ranger Command Power Hour, Alex Z, the Waz, Orion, Jordan B, the Chaos Witch, my Bickle brother in common law, Joshua, Jake, Steve Barnes, a sweet child of time, my mother, Lil Corey's BF and now former roommate Shane, that fed. Twitch.tv forward slash core winning. It's Corwin from This Movie's Gay and from Formulaic, a podcast and script writing, The Rom Complex, and from Twitch.tv forward slash R2 Shelby 2. It's R2 Shelby 2. And I've been James. I'm Jose. And we've been Death, Death to Squids. Bye bye. God, such a wild movie. Oh, yeah.